In this clip, I'll show how to create a line graph, uh, which is an appropriate graph for usually for time series data. So this is a data file file called ONS underscore UK. It's data uh, which I downloaded from the ONS web page, the Office for National Statistics. Um, if you're on my course, you can get this data file from the Blackboard site. Otherwise, there's a link in the description. Uh, so what we have here is two data, cross domestic product and um, inflation, okay, CPI inflation. And uh, what we want to show here is a couple of graphs use, using this, mainly line graphs. So let's start with a line graph, a representation for one of these data sets, okay? Say the cross domestic product. What we have here is actually not the cross domestic product, but the quarter on quarter growth rate. So it's an annual growth rate of GDP. So you can see here 1989, quarter four, the value here is 2.2. .2. That means between um, 1988, uh, quarter four, and 19. 90, uh, 1989 quarter four, the economy or the GDP grew by 2.2 percentage point. Okay, so let's display these growth rates. So the way how you're going to do this is we highlight the data which you want to show in the graph. So that's this bit. You can either scroll down to the end or there's a little trick in Excel. You go to the first row, then you press the shift up button then the N and keep the shift up button uh, down. Okay, then you press end and then the down arrow. So I press shift button, then end, let that go and then the down button. And it highlights all rows until it gets to the end, right? There are no more data. So we have that highlighted, go to insert. And uh, we go, which graph do we want? This little symbol gives us a line graph. Oh, we want a line graph. And here we go. I like to have them at the top of the file. So I highlight that control X to cut. And I just move to the top of the spreadsheet, click into a cell here and press control V to paste. So here's our graph. Okay, all we want to do now is a little bit of cosmetics in this graph. So it has a generic chart title. We want uh, this to say UK annual growth. So I'll just say UK annual growth rate. Okay, or whatever you want, want to say here. All right. So then uh, we want an axis here, perhaps on the vertical axis. So we go to add element chart, uh, axis title, uh, perhaps primary vertical, we'll just say again, crow freight. Crow freight, and perhaps we say that this is in percentage points. Okay. Um, so then what else do we want? Well, this axis here, it counts the observations. Ideally, what we want to have here is the dates. Okay, so the way to do that is you highlight your graph, you right mouse click, and there is an option called select data. So what we what we see here is our data chart range. Okay, it's column B6 to B137. There's an option here, horizontal category axis labels, and it just has this one, two, three counts all the way down to the last observation, but we can edit this. So you can click on that edit. And now you can highlight where you want these labels to come from. Well, we want these labels here. Okay, all the way down here. These are the dates which we want. Click OK. And click OK. And we'll find our graph somewhere up here. So now you can see that actually what it has is the um, all the dates. Now it still looks a little bit awkward because we have this, uh, the axis, the horizontal axis is on zero. And, but we also have sort of a few negative values. So the values go through the axis. Perhaps we want the axis 
and the label somewhere down here where the negative 15 is so we can have like a clear review of the data so how do we do this so the the way to to do that is as follows so what you do is you basically double click this vertical axis so first you have to highlight the graph then you double click the vertical axis and on the right hand side you get sort of axis options let me make that smaller so you can see it and on amongst these options up here you want to choose the one on the right not obvious to me that's why i'm here to help you and then there's an option access options and if you look around here you can see what should be bound so for instance the vertical axis goes from negative 15 to 15 if you wanted to change that you can change that here and change what sort of the major unit should be here it says five and you can see these go in steps of five these labels here but importantly here horizontal axis crosses so where does it cross it's by default it's on automatic what you want to say is you want to click access value and then tell it where to cross and we want it to cross at a value of negative 15. and we'll go somewhere else and you see how this is now uh, changed okay now the horizontal cr axis crosses down here so let's uh, we can click that away that has been changed now we have a lot of these dates and they are here vertical and that doesn't look very pleasing um, we just need an indication of where roughly the dates are so now we double click on the horizontal axis now we have options for the horizontal axis um, and let's see where we can see where we can change things so um, specify so here labels with so tick marks or labels so we go to labels sometimes i just have to try out you can't break your computer and it says interval between labels it says automatic okay so perhaps we don't want all of them so specify unit interval you see if you now say click that box it says one and it tries to fit in each of these uh, it actually doesn't even manage that so let's use perhaps three years of data which would be 12 quarters we have quarterly data and let's see how that how that looks all right that looks already much better okay so why don't we just uh, leave it let's have a look what else can we have label position next to access high low non and next to access okay uh, that's all that's not let's not mess with this okay so that looks pretty good so let's click that away and here we have a pretty useful uh, image so let's say we also have this inflation series here what do we do if we don't only want to um uh to to show one series but two series in one graph well um we could either let's let's say i'll, I'll show you a couple of ways you could start the same process but just by highlighting the two series and then we go to insert line graph here and you see that immediately you're having your two uh series in here all right so that's pretty that's pretty good already and now you can do all the adjustments we did before okay which was adding the dates as the labels for the horizontal axis then moving the horizontal axis down and controlling how many of these labels we see okay i leave that uh, for you to to work out but one more thing i want to show you here as we are uh, as we are looking f at time series data which we are here um i just want to illustrate why let's move that up control x and we'll move it up here oh, perhaps actually i'll show you one other way how you can do that now we already have this graph it's sort of nicely formatted um if you click on the graph you right mouse click go to select data and you see what we have here is well, we have our labels here and series we have one series 
which is the series in column B. But what you could do is you could add a series here. And what we do here, series name, you can say that's inflation. Okay, and then series values, you go to here. Okay, we choose that. Okay. And now, because we have two series, we want to, the first one we hadn't named yet. So let's uh, edit that and call that GDP growth. Click OK. OK, so now we have two series. Let's click OK. Let's see our top graph also has both of the series, and we still kept all of the formatting from previously. previously. Now, of course, what you now want to do is we don't know which one's the orange which one's the blue one we can go to um uh, chart design okay here on the top add chart element so we want to add a legend here we go legend and yeah let's have it on the right okay gdp growth inflation so that's also a pretty good way uh to go about perhaps actually you want that legend rather in the bottom it takes too much space so uh, legend bottom perhaps that's a little bit nicer and if you have both series in here you perhaps don't want to call this the growth rate you just want to say that this is in percentage points okay and change the title macro data Okay, but we now have two sets of data in here, so that's why we generalize that a little bit. So these are time series graphs, and they really quite illustrate quite well to you what happens in these time series. Time series. Uh, in these time series, let's say, couldn't we look at perhaps a scatter plot? We have two series, and we can. A very common plot if you have two variables is to use a scatter plot. You can see that here, that little symbol. So let's just create a scatter plot. Here we have scatter plot. Let's just move that over here. Okay, so here's our scatter plot. And now, okay, what we can do is we what we have on the horizontal axis is growth, on the vertical axis we have inflation. And we can of course work with this graph, but I think you can immediately see that. The nature of the data is not as well displayed in this scatter plot. The reason being is the time series dimension gets totally lost. Right? So we don't know whether this point here, whether that is in the 90s or perhaps very late 2020. So that time series dimension gets lost. And that's, of course, super important when you're dealing with time series data. So that's why we usually do not use scatter plots when we have time series data.